Hey everyone, I got a uh, video here for you. Uh, it's an update on my uh, first aid kit. It's kind of a multi-purpose uh, multi first aid kit. It's uh, It has a uh, food bar on the back uh, and a nice uh, Gerber knife just in case you have to cut a seatbelt or anything like that. But uh, I keep this in the trunk of whatever car that uh, I'm in, uh, whether or not uh, we're going on vacation, going to work. Uh, most of the time it's in my trunk. Uh, and then if we're going on long trips, uh, it's in my wife's car because generally we don't go too far in my wife's car unless uh, we're heading to the in-laws or, or going to pick up some stuff for the chickens. But anyways, so this is a Voodoo Tactical Trifold um, first aid medic kit. I originally had the Black Hawk medic kit. Uh, the only problem with the Black Hawk medic roll uh, kit was the um, you'd find that the plastic uh, inserts were... You know they were quite hard. Uh, they weren't very very flexible, and you didn't really have too much room to add uh, extra um, e extra things into there. Uh, so what I ended up doing is just redoing it, and I gave the Blackhawk Medic roll to a good buddy of mine, and uh, and so he's going to go ahead and uh, make his first aid kit there. But anyways, I I was able to take everything that was in that Blackhawk Medic roll and shove it in this uh, trifold right here, and. I was able to actually add quite a bit of um, things in here, and I'll tell you what I added and and, and so on and so forth. Um, this looks a little uh, like it's a little bit bulging, and it's just because I took a few things out, and when I put it back in, it, I didn't put it back in the correct way, so it's not as space saving. So, anyways, uh, there's just a nice hard plastic clip on the front here. You just open that up, take the top off, and it folds out into a roll right here. Okay. Now, before I go over anything, uh, I just want to uh, make it, uh, you know, give you some good advice. Um, if you're going to make a first aid kit, I would prefer, you know, it would be better to make a first aid kit, in my opinion. You know, you can buy a first aid kit at the store. The only problem is a lot of times they will tell you that it comes in a, a 150 pieces or 250 pieces, and you know, and you're and you you think to yourself, well, you know, it's fifteen dollars, and I'm getting 250 pieces. This is a really good deal, but uh, what you're really getting is mostly just band-aids. You know, band-aids, maybe a little bit of Neosporin or Bacitracin, um, but it's just mostly band-aids. Uh, maybe a little bit of 2x2s two or 4x4s, four but um, just it, it's not as an overall extensive first aid kit. So um, I think the, the those those big Johnson & Johnson ones that they have at Walgreens, the best thing about those first aid kits are the, is the plastic case that it comes in. That's about it. Um, but anyways, so... Like I said, this is the trifold medic kit right here. Uh, we'll go over the first pocket that's here. So uh, I try to keep everything kind of compartmentalized. Uh, this one, um, I have uh, a few things. Uh, I know what everything is in this pack. I know everything that's in this pack, and I know everything that's in this pack right here. And I try to keep the things that have um, like similarities in here, so I'm not having to dig through here and having to dig through here for something that's related to here. So, and everybody's going to be a little bit different. You don't have to mirror this. Um, and to kind of give uh, myself an even more extensive uh, idea of what I want to have in my first aid kit, I took everything that I thought that I needed in my first aid kit, things that uh, that I knew I've used, uh, you know, throughout the years and everything, and then I added. Um, more things onto it uh, based on things that I saw from a YouTuber um, and his channel is US N E R doc and I will put a link in my description and uh, he has just a fantastic channel when he talks about uh, first aid you know first aid gear camping gear he does a lot of CB things um, it's just a it's just an awesome channel and there's another channel um, it's skinny medic um, I don't really watch this channel too much just because I just don't come across it too much, but I do recommend uh, there is a joint video between him and Such where they teach you how to make a chest seal out of a plastic bag and taping it on the three corners. Um, you know, mostly everything you put in a first aid kit, you have plenty of room for bags, but uh, you don't have, sometimes you don't have room for a chest seal. So uh, just a few extra seconds, you can just take, cut a piece of plastic and, and put it on their chest. So anyways, so let's go on to the first pocket here. Uh, of course, you, you just see the tape right up at the top here. This is some good old silk tape right here. Now, the reason I have such a big roll of silk tape is because you can actually take these, cut these, and make um, uh, 
stereo strips out of them. So, it, you know, it's nice. You know, I am a surgical nurse and I deal a lot with drains. And one of the things that, you know, I hate silk tape just because it sticks to your skin a lot. Um, it damages their skin. And, uh, and most of the folks I deal with have uh, had some sort of chemo or radiation at some point in time. So, you know, so their skin's real thin. So this isn't a, typically something I would put on, you know, a 90-year-old or an 80-year-old for that matter, or if they have that transparent skin. But if you really need to get something uh, to stick, this is, this is really what you want to get. Um, you can get this at Walgreens. Everything you can get here, you can get at Walgreens because I've got it at Walgreens. Uh, Dollar Tree and CVS and it didn't really cost me too much. I actually put this whole kit together for um, less than far less than an already pre-made kit from uh, either Amazon or any of those survival websites uh, Just some regular transparent uh, Porous tape. This is pretty good for for certain things, but you know It doesn't hold up very well when your skin gets wet and uh, you get sweaty now I have a little uh, medication pack right here. Now you'll, I don't know if you'll see this on his website anymore, but I actually got this from that USNER doc, and he was able to uh, put this whole layout. And it's actually quite nice because whenever you have these medications, um, sometimes you know if you're not there, someone needs to use them. Um, they, it's it's easy to read. So what you'll see on there is you'll see aspirin. Uh, Benadryl, uh, Pepsid, Imodium, Claritin, uh, so on and so forth. And so if they just open up this bag, they can see it, uh, you know, see what the medication is, see what the dosage is, and even see how often to take it. Now, one of the nice things that uh, the this USN NER doc uh, says is keep your Pepsid, like if you need to do an antacid, and sometimes we'll do this, uh, you know, we'll do this in the hospital here, but. Uh, but keep your Pepsid in the same pocket as the Benadryl, and you know I didn't even think about it. But um, the reason being is if you have an allergic reaction, Pepsid is a histamine blocker, and so is Benadryl. So you can take those and they kind of potentiate each other, and uh, it'll help out with any kind of allergic reaction that you're going to have. Um, but some of the things that you'll see in here is there's some of the Imodium, there's Carmex. I hate, I hate Carmex, um, but I'll tell you what. It really works well. It just tastes nasty. That's that's really what I hate about Carmex. It just it, it just is horrible. Um, but like I said, I mean it works. So either that or petroleum jelly. And then we go on here. Nice little headlamp. Uh, what you'll notice, you really want to have some uh, some adequate lights that are in your first aid kit because uh, through this first aid kit, you're going to see that I have a, a dental um, a dental kit. And sometimes, you know, when you're working on, uh, you know, inside someone's mouth, you need both your hands. That's some of the patients I actually deal with. I, I deal with the ENT population. So a lot of times you have to, you know, get real in their mouth. Well, the problem is, is you got one uh, hand holding your flashlight, one hand holding the tool. Um, and when you really need two hands, and you can't really expect the person who's having you work on their teeth or somewhere in their mouth to hold this light in place you know steadily so get a good uh, headlamp and I also recommend if you know you get a headlamp and you get a regular flashlight and everything have everything be the same battery uh, so that way you're not having to carry your triple A's and double A's um, I don't recommend a lot of those high intensity uh, lights and the reason why is sometimes if you have those high intensity lights uh, if you need to check someone's pupil uh, it's just way too bright and also um, when you're working and you need light in someone's mouth, sometimes that light is so bright it floods out the area that you're working in. So just get a, you know, 10 or a 12 lumen light and that's just fine. And this actually just cost me 50 cents. I uh, got it for a kit at Home Depot. Uh, another thing is don't store it with your, your battery in it. Uh, hopefully everybody knows that. Um, just because if you're going to store it in your trunk, you have a battery in there, it's going to corrode and next thing you know when you go to use it, your flashlight's junk. I just have... Uh, some cleaners here. I have some betadine swipes or betadine swabs, some kin, a skin protectant. That's a type of film that uh, you can put on the you can put on the skin, and it has this very nice microscopic film. So that way, when you tape things to their skin, um, it doesn't allow for those that the porous skin to breathe and to sweat, and it it helps keep the tape on. It's kind of like Mastasol. If any of you out there have used Mastasol, it's it's similar to it, but uh, this is more used for you know folks who have ostomy wafers and things like that. So um, there's a good one, and of course you have your um, 
your towelettes, your antiseptic towelettes, those are nice if you've got to clean your hands and you can't go without alcohol and then some more betadine swabs. Now there's a YouTuber out there that originally in his kit he had uh, little tiny uh, packets. They, they were they kind of looked like uh, small test tubes and he filled them with hydrogen peroxide and, and betadine or alcohol. The only problem is you know you're getting you know you get these tubes these wet tubes that are in your first aid kit that's supposed to be dry and then it busts open for some for some stinking reason and that's uh, that's the worst thing to come across whenever you're trying to get in your first aid kit and you find out that all your band-aids are soaked or your tape is soaked with hydrogen peroxide or betadine so but anyways we'll go on um, I have some glucose gel here uh, the glucose gel they actually have a dollar tree you can get uh, a pack of two for the for the dollar and I have here just a little specimen container hopefully this will zoom in a little specimen container and these are those diabetic lancets that you use I use these for uh, any kind of blisters or um, small skin abscesses or anything like that that you have to drain. Um, they're really nice because they're sharp as heck. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you need thread for, for any reason, let's hope that that zooms in here a little bit. Thread for, for th or thread a needle for any reason. I just put, stuck my needle in there. Uh, and then you can see that I have a... Uh, um, an eraser on the top there just to kind of pad that needle uh, so you don't stab yourself. We use these quite a few times and, and I'll tell you they they work really really well. Um, my double A's and this is some um, tension wrap. Well I call it tension wrap. Uh, everybody calls it a little bit different. What it is is uh, it's like a tape. Uh, it's very similar to those clings, uh, those uh, little window clings that you put on um, there's not adhesive or anything like that. What it does is it has a bunch of ripples in it and when you stretch it, it's made to compress back and when you stretch it, you give it, it, you give it this huge um, surface area and it's made to stick, stick to each other. Kind of like those window clings and, or, uh, or like the, the fibers and the filaments that are on um, gecko feet just with all that surface area. And it's nice because you can reuse this. You can take it off, put it back on, take it off, put it back on. It works really, really well. Now you can buy this for uh, a person and it's going to be really expensive. It's going to be about like four or five times as much as uh, what this was. Um, I was on a blog one day uh, just kind of searching, um, you know, searching for this in the price and I saw that uh, there was this vet website and unfortunately I cannot find that website. Um, they were selling two of these for a dollar. So I went ahead and grabbed, you know, grabbed a few of them and they were good to go. You can probably buy these uh, if your vet wants to sell them to you. You can probably buy these from your, your vet if you want to, but it all depends on uh, what your relationship is with your vet. A lighter. Uh, this is just if you need to do any kind of uh, quick sterilization of a needle that you're getting ready to suture or, or anything for that matter. It's always good to have a lighter. A pair of clippers. A pair of hemostats another pair of hemostats. We've got a scalpel, another scalpel, fingernail file. Now I don't generally use fingernail files. I have a bad habit of biting my nails unfortunately, um, which I know what you're thinking. You know, he's a nurse and he's biting his nails. I don't bite him at work, but you know, I do bite him sometimes at home. I started when I was playing guitar and I've never stopped. But anyways, uh, you know, just a fingernail file. This works really well. Um, it also helps out if you have any kind of repair that you need to do on a tooth, um, which I'll get to a little bit later. Uh, this helps rough up that rough up the uh, tooth surface, so that way you can help get anything to stick to it. Uh, just an emergency blanket. Uh, this works out really well. And uh, you know, I have it vacuum sealed. You know, you don't really need it vacuum sealed, but uh, you know, I needed the extra space, so. I shoved it in there. I had this vacuum sealed when I had the Black Hawk kit, but you don't really need to have a vacuum sealed with this trifold kit. Good old trusty duct tape. Um, you know, a lot of folks who just take duct tape and take the roll, smash it, and, and throw it in a bag of the first aid kit. But, you know, if us guys, if we open up our wallets, I bet you 10 bucks, we probably have either an expired card somewhere in there or a uh, membership card for a place that we don't shop at anymore. So this is an old Sam's Club card, just took it off, put uh, duct tape on it, and I've actually used this a few times, and it's, uh, <laughs> it 
it's, it's worked out very well. So uh, just do that. Uh, you got yourself some good old tweezers. Now these aren't, uh, you know, really, really good tweezers to, to get into tight areas. There are some better, uh, let's get in here. There are some better tweezers that you can use, but uh, um, these will work out fine. A pair of scissors. A good old thermometer. Another pair of hemostats. I know what you're thinking. Why the heck does this guy have so many hemostats? Well, if it comes to the point where you need hemostats, you're going to be glad you have the hemostats. Uh, another nail file here. And a pair of scissors. These are these are tight nose scissors. I had these from work. Actually, I took them home from work one day. So, but those are nice for for a few other things. And then this is a this is a, a small tight end pair of tweezers. If I focus in there, there we go. So you can really get in there with these tweezers. These are meant for pulling out some sutures. Really get in getting in there. And of course, this is all stainless steel. It's medical stainless steel, so um, it's easy to clean. You can just steam them, throw them in a pot. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put the stuff back in. We're gonna go to our next section here in just a second. All right. So here's the middle section right here. This one's a little bit more tightly packed. This is uh, this is my uh, um, my bandage section. Um, I do have a few few small modules in here. Uh, one is uh, the skin shield. I really like this skin shield. Um, I like super glue the most, even though it burns like Dickens. But uh, but the skin shield's pretty good. Um, you can have you can get some that have a pain reliever in them. Uh, the only bad thing is sometimes they it burns when you put it on. Uh, so you got to wait for the for the pain relief to kick in. It's um it has a type of benzene in it. So that works well. And then this here, this is a you can see it labeled there wound cover and closure kit. So I recommend just getting good quality bags. Um, you know, you can get those bags from Dollar Tree and Aldi and things like that, you know, the nice affordable ones. But I'll tell you what, um, as much as I pull this in and out, you have tools that are in here, stainless steel tools you know there's a lot of scratches and and, and um, nicks and all that on there stretches and I still don't have any holes and remember I was telling you in the beginning of the video that uh, you can use one of these bags you can open them up and use it as chest seal so you definitely don't want a bag that has a hole in it um, if you're going to use it as a chest seal or even just to hold water you might even need these at a certain time you might have to dump everything out and this is your only way to carry water so, but anyways, this is the wound closure and uh, or wound cover and closure kit. Uh, some of the things that you'll see in there is good old trusty super glue. Have a few, uh, uh, few, uh, well, I don't not ampules, but things of super glue. You know, it's 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 so cheap. Actually, super glue is uh, is sometimes cheaper than band aids um, because you know the band aids you're having a uh, take off, put back on, take off, put back on, even when it gets wet and everything. And I actually have a little bit of super glue. Um, at, at work and sometimes if I'll cut my my finger or uh, cut my forearm or my hand I'll actually just say hell with the the band-aid and I'll just go put some super glue or some mastisol on it and get that nice film uh, you know because my hands are always wet from from washing my hands and this holds up very very well now like I said it does burn but uh, super glue does work very well I have some petroleum jelly uh, this just kind of helps out, uh, you know, if I if I have chapped lips or anything. I have petroleum jelly in pretty much all of my kits. Uh, that way, it's it's you know spursed out through everything. Um, Band aids. I have some bacitracin. Um, I have some steri strips. Uh, regular band aids. Now I do have some mastosol. Now a lot of this stuff, you're wondering like, well, where the heck is he getting this mastosol? Is he getting this from work? Is it... no, not getting it from work because. Uh, you know you can, uh, you can get fired from work, but um, like this petroleum jelly and things like that, um, you can actually get it on. Uh, the, let me. I have to find a website for you. Um, but I get my sutures, my petroleum jelly, my mastosol. But what it is is they sell expired medical equipment, um, like sutures, um, mastosol, um, just just 
regular stuff, I mean, they can't resell it to a hospital. They're not allowed to use it, so they and they still want to turn a profit. So they sell them, uh, I think it's like 60% of what the, the normal cost of the sutures are. So um, uh, I'll have to, I'll really have to find a website for you. But you can get all this on that website, okay? Um, and, of course, it doesn't really take up that much room. Next, I have some um, Vaseline gauze and uh, and some regular nonstick dressings. Now, I have a bunch of four by fours. The four by fours were uh, were the the space issue that I had. I needed to get all these four by fours into that Black Hawk Medic roll, which I just I couldn't seem to fit two or three pack, or no more than two or three packages in there. And each package just has two four by fours and. 4x4s really don't absorb too much, but uh, but you want them because they're good. They're handy. You can do a lot of things with them. So I went ahead and I just opened up uh, 10 packs and vacuum sealed them. And they take about the same amount of room as 3 packs. So there's uh, there's 20 4x4s in there. Now this one is a 10 count. I was able to just fold it and throw it in there. And I recommend labeling all these because, like for instance, this here... For anybody who works in the medical field, it kind of looks like a roll of Curlex. So you don't want to open it up looking for a roll of Curlex and actually and accidentally find that you have uh, four by fours. Um, I just have some uh, occlusive uh, dress or occlusive Vaseline dressings here too for for burns. And this is a roll of uh, two inch Curlex, two inch by seventy five inch Curlex. I have two of them in there. And that's for just small. Um, oral dental packing or anything like that. Some more Telfa. Some um, some Tegaderms for for uh, um, skin wounds or skin closure or anything like that. That's another thing that I'll, I'll stick on. If I have a if I have an opening and I don't have any super glue or anything, I'll just clean the area, put some skin protectant or Mastisol and I'll just put a, a Tegaderm on in place. Uh, some more Vaseline gauze. Some more Tegaderm. And then here are my ABDs, my high absorbent abdominal pads. Um, I have seven of, seven of them in here, and I have them vacuum sealed, and it really helps out with the space. So, uh, like I said, you know, this is this is pretty much my my wound bag. So if anybody's bleeding or I need to put a bandaid on them, I know that this uh, that this pocket here is uh, is key. This is what I want to get into. Um, this is kind of not as minor. You're, you're bleeding and everything, and um, it's like uh, it's like your mild, moderate, and, and this is your severe pack back here. We'll get back here in just a second. Um, so, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, and I'll be back uh, with our other section. All right, we're, so we're here in this last, last section here. So before I get to, uh, to this backpack, um, you want to have a set of gloves or what I call my PPE bag for personal protective equipment. Uh, you want to have that uh, initially in the front. Uh, one of the th you don't. One of the things you don't see here is you don't see my my safety glasses just because I I had to use them for something else, so they're they're not here. My safety glasses are are uh, right on top. Um, I always have safety glasses, you know, either close by or I'm already wearing my glasses or some sort of um, eye protectant because. Uh, um, when you have someone's bleeding, it's very unexpected to, uh, you, you don't know if anything's going to splash up in your face. And the last thing you want to do is um, stop trying to, to help or save that person because you got blood or, or something in your eye. Or even just just dust for that matter. If it's an accident or anything like that, you can get anything in your eye. And you don't want to have anything that's going to incapacitate you and add uh, another person uh, that the EMTs or the firefighters have to help. So anyways, uh, this is just simple. You just have some betadine swabs, um, some alcohol gel, and check this, this alcohol gel because some of the times, uh, I didn't get this at Dollar Tree. I just got this from Giant Eagle, or not Giant Eagle, but Dave's. The um, alcohol at Dollar Tree seems to expire uh, way faster than anything else. Now, I don't know if it's just because, you know, they buy lots from other stores that's, that are closing down, and so they're close to the expiration date or not, um, but I find it's just, uh, it's just better just to buy it from another, from another store. And then, uh, some good latex-free gloves. Um, you definitely want to get some latex-free gloves, because if you're going up to help someone, 
and you find that you're you're doing good you got them you got them uh, safe and everything but you're wearing latex gloves and they have a latex allergy and they go into anaphylactic shock well now you just shot yourself in the foot because you know you went through all that trouble trying to save that person and now you have a respiratory issue and of course you know unless you're a doctor or an EMT uh, you know you can't um, you, you can't uh, provide uh, advanced life support uh, uh, a, it's just not safe, okay? So there's the, so the things that you're going to need to do. Um, okay, but before we go to our next section here, I just wanted to show you this bag here. This is my personal protective uh, bag right here, or PPE. Um, I just have a few things in here, like some betadine swabs, some alcohol gel, and some gloves. Just make sure that your gloves are uh, latex-free, and they slide on easily. Sometimes, uh, you know, when you buy gloves from a store or anything, like for instance, me, I have large hands. So all most of the first aid kits that uh, you see in the store have uh, have medium-sized gloves. So just grab yourself some large gloves and uh, and ones that uh, these these nitrile gloves actually have uh, some uh, rough edges on the fingertips, so you have good grip. Some of those vinyl gloves, they they don't. When you're touching things and your hands get wet, you don't have very good grip. When I say the vinyl gloves, I'm talking about the ones that look like uh, lunch lady gloves. But yeah, use uh, latex free because there are a lot of people out there that do have uh, a real severe latex allergy that can go into anaphylactic shock, and you don't want to spend all that time trying to save that person. Um, to find out that they have a severe latex allergy and you know now they have a respiratory issue because they can't breathe from it um, but there's that uh, this is an admin pack uh, this is another idea that I got from that uh, the youtuber the USNER doc um, just has some uh, some note cards in here and a pen and a marker you know he uses uh, waterproof paper I don't use waterproof paper I just use regular note cards um, but you can write instructions down, and uh, you know sometimes uh, you know if you have someone with a, a bad bleeding wound and things like that, uh, you don't want to uh, you don't want to take the wound down because the wound's holding pressure on there. Uh, but you can easily just draw you know what the issue is in there. Um, you know if you had someone with a gunshot wound or not, uh, you can say, did you see the, the is there an exit wound? Do you see an entrance and an exit wound? How many are there? And so on and so forth. So um, of course it's in a little plastic bag. And then on the side here, I have this good Rayovac light that I got from good old trusty Myers for I think it was like a buck fifty or or two dollars. It was on clearance, uh, but this is a AA battery, and this is a nice flood. It's a Cree light, but it's a flood Cree. It doesn't zoom in or anything like that. Which I do use zoomable lights uh, um, when I'm on the when I'm on the floor at work, but. Uh, it's nice because it's just it doesn't uh, over saturate the area and you can really get a good picture of everything um, so going on to the next section I gotta turn on another light here kinda help out a little bit um, so this is kinda my severe section pack right here when I say severe I mean they're, you know life-threatening things so um, if you've noticed in my packs uh, if when you pack your pack, please put the things that you think you're going to use the most up on the top and the things you're not going to use the most on the bottom. Like, for instance, on my first pack, I have all those hemostats on the bottom, um, but I have Imodium and Tylenol and aspirin and, and your Benadryl and everything up at the top just because I'm more likely to use that than I am a set of hemostats. So, so some of the things I'm talking about is some ammonia inhalants, uh, also known as smelling salt. Uh, you can get these really cheap on Amazon. I got these for like three bucks. Uh, it, it was like an add-on with free shipping. So, uh, you know, I, I'm a Prime member, so I get a lot of my stuff from Amazon. So, um, these are nice. Um, I, I really urge you to be careful what you put these around. Uh, let me kind of show you. They're just plain old ampules. They do come in this padded um, stuff here but it's not going to pad it if something really heavy falls on it so just be careful what you put it around because this stuff smells I don't know if anybody's had um, had ammonia inhalants or anything like that um, but it is really really stinky and the last thing you want to do is have the ammonia inhalants pop while you're in the car on a hot day um, so there's those good old uh, resuscitation oh, upside down good old resuscitation uh, kit this is nice uh, you know, you see on TV, folks who have those Ambu bags or uh, or the 
the um, yeah, they just call them bamboo bags, so that's what they're called. But uh, they have the bamboo bags, and they're there, where they're pumping the mouth and everything, or pumping the air into the lungs and everything. Well, that's just way too space um, uh, space filling. So you can get the actual mouthpiece, and anybody who's gone through basic life support, and that's another thing, gets CPR certified. Red Cross does it. Um, you know, you, you can get the American Red Cross, or you can do uh, American Heart Association. I'm through the American Heart Association just because that's who uh, uh, most of the hospitals recognize. They like you to use that. But anyways, you have uh, an already pre-filled mouth guard. And here, this is a one-way valve. And it's really nice because, you know, you, can, you don't really have to worry about anything coming back up. So, you know, there are some instances where, you know, people do have, uh, you know, like TB or, or things like that. And, you know, if, you're, if the source of the air is going to be your mouth to this, you don't want any of that air coming back up. So, you know, it, so it can leak back out and everything. But uh, the nice thing is, is there's a little uh, nipple here. So um, you can actually uh, fit on oxygen if you, if you do have the oxygen. But having said that, um, oxygen is a medication, so you can't just take oxygen and administer it uh, to someone. So, so you got to kind of watch that. Um, but this is nice. It doesn't really take up that much room. Uh, this kit, I got this on uh, on Amazon, and it's nice because it already comes with uh, my favorite nitrile large gloves, and it comes with uh, some alcohol swabs. That way, you can clean off their mouth and everything before you before you start using it. All righty practice with these too that's another thing um you know you, get, you see all these folks on youtube and everything making these first aid kits um and they don't work in the medical field which is fine um but they make all these fancy first aid kits and they don't even know how to use half the stuff that's in there so when an emergency happens you know you're fumbling around and there's no way that you're going to recall that you know when you're in an emergency the things that you do are things that are memory and automatic so if you train yourself and you practice and you practice and you practice and an emergency happens you're gonna kind of uh, develop that that I call it an emergency algorithm in your head so you know if something happens your bodily your body and your muscles automatically react a certain way kinda of just like if, if a, uh, a glass is getting ready to fall off the counter we all squint and kinda of, uh, close our eyes and everything hoping that it's gonna not break that's kind of like uh, your your emergency algorithm. You train your body so that way when you have a certain response, you can react on it. You can react on it fast because the fact, faster you can react, the faster you're going to be able to um, help that person. Um, I know what you're thinking. Why the heck do you have a, a magnifying glass in your uh, large kit? Well, no any reason. I just really didn't have any other room in my other bag. So... Um, I just, you know, threw this in here. So this is a Fresnel lens that I got from uh, Harbor Freight. It was like three bucks. Uh, this is nice because there are many times where I've had a, a splinter. And it stinks because if you get a splinter that's that's really, really small, uh, you know, that splinter's really not causing any damage to the other area other than uh, this the small little splinter. Um, but the problem is, is because it hurts, now you're digging and digging and digging. And uh, you end up causing more damage to that area than you had before with that splinter. And then uh, then you get a nice inflammatory response going. And uh, next thing you know, at the end of the day, you got some uh, pus coming out of there. So you really don't want that. So get yourself a nice little magnifying glass. You know, it doesn't have to be a Fresnel lens, but I like it because of the amount of magnification you get for the, for the small, um, you know, for the small... Um, amount of glass and you also if you can see on there I don't know if you, it'll focus in on it um, but you have the uh, uh, inches and centimeters so you can kind of measure things if you need to and the other thing I like about this is because this is actually a book magnifying glass is it has a light so you can really get in there with your one hand with the tweezers and then really um, illuminate the the damaged area or where the splinter is and, and get a look at it. So, okay, on to the next. So, this is eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. Um, this isn't really a severe, a, you know, severe thing that doesn't really belong in there, but um, I, like I said, I didn't have room for some of these things in the other pack, so I threw it in here. 
But to kind of go through, uh, you know, I have some uh, regular dental floss. This is called Dent, or yeah, yeah, Dent Temp. I can never say it right the first time. Never been able to say it right the first time. So anybody who's, who's had a uh, filling come out or a chipped tooth um, should really know about this. Uh, you go to Walgreens, CVS, or, or any place that, uh, that has medical supplies, um, and you get this and it's a type of uh, it's a type of it's kind of like porcelain and what you do is you just fill in that uh, area and it fills it in it hardens but it doesn't harden like a um, filling so that way um, you know you can cover it up you can cover the the dentin and the nerve endings if you need to and kind of uh, protect that area and when you get to the dentist the dentist can easily extract that stuff without having to do too much work um, when I was in college, I had a filling that came out, and it was on the top of my one of my uh, back teeth. Not my molar, but uh, I can't remember the one in front of that. But, um, but anyways, um, I didn't have medical or dental, and I ended up using this stuff uh, every two months. I had to uh, replace it, and I put it, you know, in the area, and it lasted until I got uh, until I got my nursing degree, until I got insurance, and then I. Uh, went to a dentist and had him properly, um, you know, properly fill the the filling. But, but anyways, this is some uh, wax gum. Um, it's not the gum that you chew. Uh, this here is the type of uh, wax that you see that they pad your uh, uh, braces. Anybody who's had braces, um, they put these uh, pads or some or derivative of this on there so it doesn't tear up the inside of your gums. This is just a nice, helpful thing to have um, that you can kind of coat. Oops, sorry. You can kind of coat things with if you need to. Um, here's just a nice little uh, magnifying glass. Now they have magnifying glass. I used to have a nice one that had an LED light on it, so you can really get in the back of uh, the back of someone's mouth. But uh, this is uh, real useful if you if you can't see what you what you need to see. Um, you can really get in the in the back of someone's tooth. Um, some good old uh, beeswax lip balm. Um, here's some more fingernail files. And this is what's called an otoscope. You can see right there, I don't know if you can see the magnification on it because it's through a bag and everything, but I think you just get the idea. But that uh, protrusion right there, that is an, uh, that's a Cree LED light. Uh, my wife, for some odd reason, bought this. I don't remember why she bought it, uh, but she got it on Amazon. And I think it was uh, 15 bucks. Um, but I think it's called like the uh, the Mom Otoscope or Doctor Mom Otoscope is what it's called, and uh, it's it's really nice. It has these uh, these adapters on here, and an otoscope. You know, you can uh, you can look in their ears, you can look in their um, eyes, which I don't really I wouldn't really recommend shining the LED in your in the eye unless you know what you're doing, um, and then in your nose. Uh, but uh, a, a good otoscope is a few hundred bucks, and I, you know, I was telling my wife a few months ago. That's probably why she bought it, because I told her a few months ago that I really like an otoscope. The only problem is, is I can't even fathom the, uh, spending that much money. Um, some Q-tips. Uh, these are good to to help add any kind of any kind of your mouth sore liquid. Where is that at? There we go. There we go. That's got some uh, benzocaine in it, so it'll help. Uh, it'll help numb the area. Um, but you have that, and then uh, it also helps dry the area. If you know, if you have a wet tooth and uh, you're trying to sand it down to put this dent temp in, this kind of helps dry the little the area back there, so we can use it. And then you're wonder, probably wondering why the heck I have a black tea bag in here. Well, Earl Grey is just what I had at the time, but uh, there are uh, some. Uh, some natural chemicals that are actually in the tea that help uh, with dental pain. So just you know, put it in a cup, get it nice and moist, and just put it right back on that tooth and just hold it in place. Don't chew down on it or anything. Just hold it down there, and, and it'll help out with some uh, some pain. Um, I have some uh, some eye drops. I got these eye drops uh, for my um, for my stepdad. He has a nebulizer, and you can get these. These are those little three cc bullets uh, that you use for um, for the nebulizer machines or the mist machines for folks who have asthma or um, they have to do breathing treatments quite frequently. But these work real well. They have three milliliters each. And then, uh, and then I just have some two by twos that are in there. And of course, here, I'll show you. 
um, I have it labeled uh, your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. So that way, if you need to tell someone, hey, grab my eyes, ears, nose, and mouth bag, they can just easily open this up and find it. Uh, this kind of fell down, but this was at the top of the top of the kit with the CPR mask. But for anybody who does not know what that is, this is usually a dead giveaway for folks who have seen them before. This is a tourniquet. Um, I think they started using these initially uh, either in the SAS or uh, or widespread, I should say, in the SAS or I, I can't remember whether or not it was Britain or if it was uh, United States. But anyways. Um, I was reading an article once where there was this medic who was trying to improve the, survivor, the survivability of the, um, the soldiers on the battlefield. And he was finding out that uh, when the soldiers were getting injured, these were heavy bleeding injuries. And if there was a way that they could stop it um, faster, they would uh, they have a higher uh, rate of success or a higher rate of uh, survivability. So they did a mass training with these uh, tourniquets, and essentially all it is is it's kind of like a book bag strap in a way with a real heavy-duty Velcro, and it opens up like this. You shove your arm through it. Let me kind of you kind of shove your arm through it there, and you just pull it tight, and you pull the tourniquet, and then here on this bar, so you have that strap. You pull that strap back. That's kind of hold that in place. Let me take the directions out. And you just squeeze this and squeeze this and twist. And what it does, I don't want to do it too much because I like my left arm. And what it does is there is a plastic piece that's in there. If you can see that, that plastic piece is connected to this heavy duty nylon. And that's actually what causes the, the extra pressure on your skin. Now, when I was in Boy Scouts, they used to say, you know, don't apply a tourniquet unless you're willing to lose that limb. Well, I don't uh, really tell folks that that much um, about a tourniquet and everything because if it's if it's bleeding that bad to where that you need to put a tourniquet on, I think the last thing you have to worry about is losing your limb. So, if you know what I mean. Um, so, you know, have these on. Don't be afraid if you have a really bad gushing wound. Uh, just put the tourniquet on. I, I mean, it can always be taken off. It's not permanent. So put the tourniquet on. You know, if you have a, a real bad bleed or anything, someone got punctured by something, and it's just bleeding, 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 throw the tourniquet on and uh, go ahead and apply a lot of pressure, and uh, and then you can eventually take it off. I, you know, personally, I wouldn't do that because then all of a sudden you got this big rush of arterial and uh, venous pressure, and uh, uh, you might not have that area clotted off appropriately. But... Uh, you know, it's a good thing to have. You never know when you're going to need it. And then on the bottom here, I have, uh, this is kind of my um, my other medication um, pack. So I have more Tylenol in here. I have more ibuprofen in here. I have oral hydration salts. I have burn gel. That's what's in this right here is burn gel. Now when you get burn gel at Walgreens, it comes in a huge stinking container. So I just shoved it in a, in a test tube here. Um, then I have some hydrocortisone cream and I have a bite kit. Now there was a story that I saw on, uh, it was like, I think it was Yahoo, that uh, Yahoo or, or my newspaper, but uh, this person got bit and um, bit by a snake. And they use this uh, this bite kit, the or the extraction, the venom extraction kit, and it actually saved his limb. They they said that it seemed to be able to pull out enough of the venom that uh, uh, when he got it, you know when he was able to get the medical care because it was delayed because of course he was out in the woods, um, he was able to save that limb, which is just fantastic. You know, you can really uh, get hurt if you, of course, you know this is a stupid thing to say, but you can really get hurt when you get a snake bite. And, uh, and you know, some first aid kits or some first aid books recommend well, putting a tourniquet on, this, on the area. Well, if you're by yourself and you got to put a tourniquet on your leg, um, you know, your leg's eventually going to fall asleep. So you got to walk out and be screwed either way. But there's a shaver in here to kind of shave the site. So, and then um, on the back here, like I, I had in the beginning of the video, uh, I have this nice Stanley uh, multi uh 
I call it a foobar tool, but uh, it's but a foobar, foobar or, or breaching tool. But uh, it's nice. You can you can really do just about anything with it. You see in some videos where people actually will make this into a breaching tool, and they'll cut this off right here. Um, but I, I found that this could be uh, quite val valuable for someone who's uh, you know has to really get uh, into a door like a car door, and they need that extra uh, wedge pressure. And then my, my Gerber knife up here if you need to cut through a seatbelt. I usually always have a knife on me, but uh, you don't want to rely on the fact that, you know, you should have a knife on you and then you accidentally do, or you accidentally don't. So, um, oh, and the last thing, I have an extra uh, extra stethoscope, or my extra stethoscope. This is when I had nursing school in old Littman, so just throw that in there. That way you can, uh, you can see what's going on. Um, and if you have an old blood pressure cuff... Uh, you can throw that in there too, but uh, I figured that I don't really, you know, I can't administer anything that's really going to uh, raise someone's blood pressure. I can only uh, do interventions like raising their feet and things like that. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, you, if if you've seen folks with low enough blood pressure and you can palpate, uh, you know, their their um, veins and everything, you'll know that their blood pressure is uh, thready and, and too low anyway. So. That's just extra room to, or extra space it takes up. So, well, I hope you like this video. And uh, if you do, click the like button. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll go ahead and answer that comment. All right, have a good one.